You're listening to this week's episode of the Vacation Rental Business in Today's World podcast. You're about to start transforming your business and life with the information found here. We interview some of the greatest and most influential minds in the vacation short-term rental industry and supporting businesses. The information found here is a combination of brain science, transformational thinking, safety and loss prevention, and vacation short-term rental knowledge and experiences all rolled into one to help you and your business to achieve levels you never thought possible. I am glad you are here, and now please welcome your host, Eric Thibodeau. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Safer VRs. My name is Eric Thibodeau, and I'm glad you're here. This week, I want to cover one of the nine life-saving rules for vacation rentals that I created. And before we do that, I always like to talk a little bit about what's going on. So it's the week before VRMA conference. I'm super excited to be going with uh, some of my team from Current Tides. We're looking forward to being there. I'm going to uh, the Venturi Mastermind the weekend on the Saturday before. We're going to Sunday. We're going to watch the football game. It just so happens the Texans, the Houston Texans are playing in Las Vegas for the Raiders in their new stadium. So we got tickets. We're pretty excited about that. We're season ticket holders for the Texans in Houston. So really excited about that. And then just being at VRMA with everyone looking forward to it and just super excited. And I hope I see you there. Let me know if you're a listener of the podcast. I would appreciate it. And so, yeah, looking forward to VRMA. The other thing is We still have openings available in the Awakening Vacation Rental Safety Membership Group. Go to www.safervrs.com or send me an email at eric at safervrs, just safervrs.com. Or you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty easy to find. You can find us, send us a text, and we'd love for you to join as part of our founding member launch. So as we normally do here on Safer VRs, we have, I like to present a little bit of topic on transformational thinking and just one part here, and then we'll get into the nine life saving rules. So my question for everyone as we begin transformational thinking is why is safety important? Why do you think safety is important? I understand why safety is important for me. Certainly, it's a part of my identity. It's what I do. And I even say here, safety is a value. It's something that's in my identity. It's what I do. It's in the key values that I hold in, say, for VRs, as well as in current tides of vacation rental property management that we do. Safety is a value. Safety is part of what we do. And if you've heard me talk about what our identity is, our identity is basically the, it's who we are. It's what we do. It's part of us. And it could be part of our values. So safety is a value. Safety is important to me in how I deliver for my guests, for my owners, for the community that we're in. But when we talk or speak about safety, we talk about what we want to have and sometimes what we need to do, but we never talk about who we need to be. Another thing that I talk quite a bit about is be, do, have model. And I wrote a paper for it. I'll actually have Brian put that up in the resource section out there. And I posted it on, it'll be in the Awakening membership. And I think it's on Matt Landau's blog, VRMB, as well about being professional. But a lot of times when we look at safety, and it's how we look at everything in life, really, we work from a model of have, do, be, or do, have, be. What I mean by that is, what do I want to have? What do I need to do to be that person? And really, the other way is, what do I need to do to have what I want to be who I want to be? So, for example, I want to have a successful safety program, and I'm going to check properties. I'm going to Make sure I have fire extinguishers. My owners have a safety program. These are doing activities. And then who do I need to be? This is where we typically fall down. B is, for example, for me, B is a value. Okay, I'm sorry. Safety is a value. Safety is being. I'm being safe, right? So I'm being committed. I'm being influential. It's who I am on the inside of me. First, who do I need to be? What do I need? to do to have those things that I want. So if I'm just out doing safety activities to have a safe property, it's not enough. Am I being safe? Am I being committed to doing the pre 
unit checks? Am I being dedicated to do the monthly fire and safety checks? Am I being integral? Am I being safe? All these things that come from the inside of me that then drive me to do those checks and then to have that safe property. So it takes a bit of time. We'll spend more time working on this as we learn and grow more in safer VRs. If you have any questions, just hit me up in the Facebook group or on my Facebook page, and we can talk about it some more. I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. But as we move on here, I wanted to cover the nine life-saving rules. And basically, there's nine of them. I've talked about driving. I've talked about bypassing safety controls. I've talked about safety information. Okay. And today, I want to add to that list. And today, we're going to talk about slips, trips, and falls, really tripping and falling. And why is that so important? Once again, tripping and falling, we want to prevent it. That's something we want to have. What do we want to do? We're going to talk about some of that today. And then the being is something that you need to look inside of you to see what do I need to do and who do I need to be to deliver this. So nine life-saving rules. I think in the vacation rental industry, you know, I'm also a safety professional in the oil and gas industry. Uh, Slips, trips, and falls is definitely one of the biggest issues in almost any industry that we're in. And so we're going to review walking services and stairs and properties, as well as entry to and exits from the property. This is typically where we have uh, problems, changes in elevation, uneven walking surfaces, walking surfaces not lit, walking surfaces not maintained, okay, going in and out of the property. We'll cover those. Those are some of the things that really the areas where we see. So tripping and falling along with slips are the most common type of incident in the vacation rental, short-term rental properties I mentioned. And hazard recognition and addressing the potential hazards are really critical to reducing the impact of these type of incidents for the guests, our owners, and even for our employees and contractors that are working at the property. So we talk a lot about what is tripping. You know, we talk about tripping, but what is it? So tripping is catching one's foot on something which typically causes you to stumble. So I catch my foot on an uneven surface. I catch my foot on the threshold, okay? Particularly like when you're going up and down stairs, more maybe when you're going down the stairs, there is typically, there should be the floor that you're, when you're going down the stairs, there should be an even area or there should be some transition piece that allows it to match up and be pretty much even and not have a a slight elevation or a slight raise where you could trip. These are examples of tripping. These are typically on walkways, such as floors, driveways, entryways to the property. And then, as I mentioned, changes in elevation on the same level. And then stairs. Stairs are a big one. Common tripping hazards at properties are uneven driveways, uneven walkways to the entry and exits of the property, uneven pavers. You know, we use these pavers. They look really nice, but sometimes when we settle them in, particularly on the outside, they may not be completely level. You know, you want to make sure they're level. Creates this uneven walkway to the property. Tree roots, holes in the yard. You're going out and looked in the yard. What have, if you have a yard at your term of vacation rental at one of some of our properties we do, walking through the yard, looking for holes from rain or from maybe construction work that was done, or the phone company came and did some things, take a look in your yard. Also on boarded walkways, there's loose or even uneven boards or nail pop-ups. This could be on a, a dock. It could be on a walkway out to the beach. And what nail pop-ups are is when the board is fastened down, it uses a nail, obviously, or a screw. And then sometimes those nails or screws just pop up a little bit and they create a tripping hazard. Also allows the board to become loose, which also creates a tripping hazard. And then another tripping hazard would be any changes in elevation inside and around the property. So lots of opportunities here. Some of these are going to be things we can fix. These uneven walkways, these uneven driveways, tree roots, holes. But then sometimes they're just part of the property. Changes in elevation inside and around the property. Could be step up to go to stairs, step up to go into the house, step out of the house. So step up to get into the hot tub, step down to get into the pool. So these are what we call, they're inherent to the house or the property. And basically, it's very difficult to eliminate those. 
However, nail pop-ups, holes, tree roots, and uneven walkways, we can certainly address. So another opportunity that we have is uh, lighting. So lighting for the entryway to the property must be working and on for guests after arriving when it's dark. So this could be on timers. This could be you set them and leave them on. So you have to think that guests are arriving at your property, that you're managing your own property, and they may have never been there before. They get there, it's dark, and there's no lights at all. And so they start to wander out to where they believe the house is and they trip. So it may not be a trip hazard, but if they can't see, they may inadvertently trip as they go off into the grass or into the off the off the sidewalk or the driveway. They may hit a pole, not really tripping. So to avoid this, have good lighting. You can use sensors to turn lights on and off, or you can leave lights on. LED lights are super inexpensive, very cost cost effective. Have lighting adequate for the front and the backyard of the property if you have that. Lighting for the driveway is also good to reduce trips and for emergency vehicles when they're responding to the property. So lighting is very important to reducing trips and falls. Slipping. So what is a slip? Slipping is to slide unintentionally for a short distance, typically losing one's balance or footing. Slips are another common result of unsafe conditions or actions, and slips can lead to a fall or a muscular strain or sprain. Some examples of potential slip hazards would be wet floors, which is an unsafe condition, which really becomes an unsafe act, right? Because when I put water on the floor and I don't clean it up, my unsafe act creates an unsafe condition for someone else. So rarely is there a condition that's not created by a human, whether it's through intentional or unintentional behaviors that we're performing. There's rugs or mats that don't have proper slip-resistant backing, such as in bathrooms and entry and exits. So what this is, is you've seen these, when you step out of the shower, you step out of the bath, you go into a house, there's these rugs, you know, we're wiping our feet, the floor is slippery, or we have, maybe we're entering the house, we're cleaning our feet. On the back of that rug is, should be some material that basically like a rubber that allows for the rug or the mat not to move. Could be in the kitchen when I'm cooking. It needs to have a slip resistant back. You know, a crazy story we had at one of our properties here. We talked to the guest and she had these rugs. We had just took taken over our property and they were actually in the bathroom. And we said, talked to the owner and said, hey, you know, we need some new rugs or mats in the bathroom because they don't have a slippers in backing. So when the guest steps on it, they're going to slip and they're going to basically hit their head or injure themselves. And so what they did is they glued the rug down to the bathroom floor, which eventually we had to pull up and we just ended up costing a lot more money than just doing that. So just replace the mat. Then icy conditions around and also leading to the entryway to the property and the roads. Even though it's in October when we're recording this now, it could be in some parts of the northern areas in the mountains. We're going to start experiencing icy and snow conditions. So this creates a slip hazard, which basically you need to provide for cleaning the walkway or educating your guests about that. Probably one of my worst slips I had was just graduated college, went to work in Decatur, Alabama as a safety engineer. And wintertime came. And of course, I grew up in South Louisiana. You know, there's no, there's hardly any ice conditions there. I walked out the door. It was definitely sleeting and ice had formed. And I just slipped right there, right as I walked out my apartment injured my knee, took forever for it to heal. But I just really wasn't knowledgeable about icy conditions. And basically, I'm thinking about where I'm going to work and not about my immediate surroundings. So slipping is a a concern. Falling. What is falling? Falling is the act of falling or collapsing, a sudden uncontrolled descent. So falls can occur from a height, such as on stairs, or on the same level. And as a result of tripping, I could, when I trip, I typically fall unless I catch myself. A fall is a result of an unsafe action or condition. And prevention is the absolute key to preventing falls. So let's think about this here on the stairs. I can tell you, I still remember it was Memorial Day weekend. It was 2008, and I had just joined a group, and we were buying apartment complexes. And I was so excited. I was leaving my house. 
I went down the stairs because we were going to we're going out to due diligence and inspect this property and basically inattention, right? This unsafe action. The top stair and the bottom stair are typically where you have your most problems. And why is that? Because when you are looking forward, you're going step by step. When you're at the top or you're at the bottom, you're already looking ahead because you believe that you have the ability to step down off that last step. And a lot of times we misjudge it. That's exactly what I did. It was on the first step. I misjudged it and I was holding the handrail, but I twisted my ankle pretty good. But you know what? I just taped it up and I still went to our inspection. But I still remember that when I was reviewing this and thinking about, hey, this tripping or falling, I basically fell because I was not paying attention. We could have other issues. I call it, it's called the rise over run. Basically, your tread depth and your tread height basically should be between, if you measure the distance of the tread depth and the tread height, it should be 13 to 16 inches if you took that the rise over the run, if you will. So that can also create an unsafe condition and tripping, which then causes a fall. Falls or it can be pretty devastating. So there are really types, four types of fall prevention methods. And really the one we're going to focus on here is the second one, but I'm going to cover all of really fall elimination, find ways to avoid working at height. So when we're talking about fall and we could be thinking about not necessarily our guests, but maybe our guests. They shouldn't be on ladders. We could have people, our workers, our employees, our contractors, try to find ways to keep them from working at heights. Fall prevention. This is using of guardrails or barricades to prevent personnel from falling. So anytime you have a an elevation of more than four feet, if you have a deck, you have up to stairs, more than four feet, you need to have guardrails or barricades to prevent personnel from falling over. And guardrails, basically, it should have 36-inch mid-rail and 42-inch top rail, typically, on the outside. So this is preventing them from falling out. Fall arrest, which we won't see too often in vacation rentals. Our employees may be using them. This is where they're wearing personal fall protection when they're working more than six feet above the ground. And then you have administrative controls as a type of fall protection where basically you create some physical restraint from people going, keep them from going over the edge. So if your team was doing air conditioner repairs, some of the condo buildings, they're going up and looking at the air conditioner. They're up on the roof of there, maybe they'll have some type of barricade system that will tell them, hey, you're getting towards the edge of the roof, so you don't fall. So eliminate the fall, prevent the fall. Then you would wear personal protective equipment as fall arrest and administrative controls, which basically just help keep us safe and away from the hazard. So for our vacation rental properties, the use of fall prevention will be our primary focus. This is where railings are used for any deck, stairs, or walkways that is elevated more than 30 inches above an adjacent surface. Within 36 inches, needs to have a guardrail that are typically 36 inches high. But check your local regulations. They may be more stringent. So this is where you have railings on deck, stairs, and walkways. Railings need to be checked annually for strength and good condition. And then any guardrail or handrail needs to be able to resist 200 pounds or you concentrate the load applied on the top of the rail in any direction. So guardrails and handrails, basically 200 pound load test. A handrail should be installed on any flight of stairs with three or more risers. Remember we talked about that rise over run so if I have three rise over on three steps, the handrail should be continuous from above the top tread to the leading edge of the bottom tread. So the handrail goes all the way from the top, all the way down. So you may see a railing, which is running along the top, which is also preventing people from falling off the stairs as they go down. And then the handrail is a little lower for them to hold on to. So we also have opportunities on balconies. We have chairs on balconies that present fall hazard, particularly for young children. So it's best to have regular height chairs on balconies rather than bar height chairs and certainly want to keep them away from that area. Keep the chairs and table away from the balcony and the guardrails. And I own a property in Gulf Shores. Actually, it's in Orange Beach. And I think the first year we owned it, we weren't there at the time. And it wasn't our property. Four-year-old girl fell from a condo balcony in Orange Beach. It was at our Phoenix on the Bay uh, condominium property there. And basically, the child was airlifted after falling from the second floor balcony. It's not that high, but hey, it really, it's more than, it was probably more than six or eight feet to the fall. And it doesn't take much 
to injure someone. So children on balconies, keep away from the edges, remove chairs that present fall hazard for the children going over. And the good news about the young lady, she was she was fine, no injuries, and thankfully everything went well. So for every one of my life-saving rules, I have some statements that I provide, and these are what I call self-verification statements. It's things that I would do as the owner, property manager, check. And here's the ones for tripping and fall. I install and maintain adequate lighting for the entryway, exits, driveway, stairs, and all rooms inside the property. Second, I inspect for and remove tripping hazards along the entryway and exits. I provide adequate, maintained, slip-resistant stairs with the proper depth, width, and height for the steps, safe access, as well as durable hand and guardrails. Fourth, I provide non-slip stickers on or flooring in all bathrooms and showers. There are handles available to grab onto where needed. And five, I provide rugs or floor mat with anti-skid backing. So there we go. That's kind of the wrap up and the I statements of things that as vacation rental managers and owners, we'd say, hey, I'm doing these particular steps to protect my property, particularly this time preventing tripping and falling in my vacation short-term rental. So hope this was helpful for you. I'd be interested in your feedback and comments, trips, slips and falls, or very prevalent in properties and homes and in vacation rentals. Most of our guests and maybe in some of our owners don't go to the property that often. So they're not as familiar. It's, it's not like our house that we go into in and out every day. So let's take a look, run through these IM statements of what I'm doing to prevent and to be proactive and create a safe property free from slips, trips, and falls as best as we can. I look forward to hearing from you. Love for you to join the Safer Vacation Rental Facebook group, open Facebook group for everyone, and then to join us in the awakening where we definitely cover more information, more material. You have access to all the nine life-saving rules, transformational thinking, expert witness and testimony support, and so much more. I look forward to hearing from you. Create a safe day. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Safer VR's podcast with Eric Thibodeau. If you enjoy this, I would love you to join my Facebook group, The Safer Vacation Rentals, for more of the same. You can also join our email list at www.safervrs.com. 